We're going to take a look at creating a fish eye lens effect. Now, I was asked by Stuart, one of the members of my site, and Stuart put it rather nicely. He said we quite often look at removing distortion for our, from our pictures, but how about increasing the distortion so we give that fish eye lens effect? And uh, I thought, what a great idea. Came up with some various options, and we're going to be using this image. It was taken at Cardiff Bay. It's the Millennium Center here in the center. We got the water tower, which is switched off at the moment, but uh, some of you may even recognize this from the uh, TV program Torchwood. And we got these other sticky uppy things, which look pretty good when bent a little bit. Making a start, Command J, Control J will duplicate that background layer. There it is. Next, we're going to come up. We're going to go to Edit. We're going to drop down to Free Transform. Command T, Control T is the shortcut. But while we're here, just take a look. Under the Transform menu, we've got these various options. Right, I'll come back to this in just a minute. But come into Free Transform. We're going to click on this. Around goes the Transform tool with the grab handles to the top, the center, and uh, to all the corners. Bring your cursor inside that transform tool. You'll notice the way it changes to that black arrowhead. Remember the menu we saw with the transform? Well, if you right click, there's that same menu. We're going to drop down. We're going to choose warp. Oh, and take a look up here. Look at the menu bar. As soon as we go to warp, look at the way it changes. You may recognize this. Now, this is something that we rarely delve into. But if you click on this, now drop down. Lo and behold, we've got fisheye. Click on fisheye and we get this option. It comes straight in. The default is set here for the bend at 50. You can click on this and you get that uh, finger with the arrow going through it and you can sort of increase it up into that area there. I'm just going to drop it back a little bit. Another option we have, you've got this little grab handle. If we click on this, you can see the way we can move this back and forth. I'm going to take this up into the regions of 50, which is the default, and just take it a little bit further. Now, when I was experimenting, and particularly with this picture, and bearing in mind, this will vary from image to image, so you may not need to go any further. You may find that sort of just increasing this bend works for you. But what I found with this image, it tended to distort this uh, water tower in particular. It tended to bulge it out in the center which wasn't an effect that I particularly liked. So what I found is if you press enter or return, so we've now applied that transform tool, what we're going to do next is use command T, control T, which is the free transform. We're going to right click. We're going to go back to warp. So we're now coming back into the warp. We're going to come to the custom. We're going to change this to fisheye as we've done before. There it is again at the 50, but this time we're going to drop it down a little bit. We're going to take it down into that sort of area there. And I think that looks pretty good as a fisheye lens effect. Pressing enter or return. And there it is now applied. If we just switch it on and off, you can see the difference that's actually made to the image. So that's the story so far. Now, to improve the image, because you can see it's looking a little bit sort of sorry for itself, it's lost in shadow, there's no sort of real bite to the picture, we're going to come up to layer 1, I'm going to right click, and we're going to convert it to a smart object. Now, the reason for converting it to a smart object is we're going to use one of my favorite filters, which is image adjustment dropping down. We've only got a choice or two. It's this one here. It is shadow and highlights when we click on this. Now, the first thing you need to do is just make sure that you tick the show more options. So click on show more options and you get this larger dialogue the shadow and you can move this back and forth you and the sort of look I'm after with this picture is going to be a little bit bordering on the HDR I suppose and just coming into the tonal width again grabbing hold of that slider seeing how it looks with your picture just taking it back to that area there radius and uh, you can see the way the radius is working with the image something like that looks pretty good the highlights I don't usually use this, but what I have found with this particular image is it gives the clouds just a little bit more definition. Again, just coming to the tonal width and just seeing how the tonal width works with the picture, just dropping it down slightly. Now coming to the radius, and with the radius, got a little bit of a halo effect coming around the top of the building, so I'm just going to drop that down into that area there. 
which looks pretty good. Color correction plus 20. We're going to take this up further, which is going to increase the color in the picture. And you can see that coming through, particularly on these, uh, I think it's copper, something like that, sheets we got on the front of the building. Midtone contrast, you can drop it down. And there's even more of an HDR style image, or we can take it up a little bit. And I'm going to go to that area, which looks pretty good like that. Right, once you've done that, click OK. Now you can see the reason for using this smart object. It is the smart filter which will allow you to come back at any stage and readjust it. Now with some of these fisheye lens effects you actually get a little bit of a black bordering coming around there. So let's take a look at doing this. Now this is a bit of an option. I'm going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool. So in with the marquee tools, make sure you go for the elliptical one. I've got the single selection and if you come across the style where you've got normal drop down to fixed ratio. Now with fixed ratio it's the same as pressing down and holding shift on the keyboard. I can drag it out. All right, I've just run out of space but there is our complete circle. Right, before we use the free transform tool I want to make this larger. There is another transform tool and that's located under the select. We've got the transform selection. Now this one is used for transforming the selection a little bit like it says on the label. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to drag it out just so the grab handles come over to the edge of the picture. Something like this here would be pretty good. You may notice that little purple line. That's because I'm using view show. I'm using smart guides, which tends to align things and it shows you when you're right on the edge. Dropping this down into the bottom of the picture. Again, you can see that purple line. So I know I'm directly on the edge of the image, pulling this up and there's that purple line again. Right, it's not sure I quite like this elliptical effect and we're going to be chopping the tops of our towers off here. So we're going to reverse out a little bit into that area. Down to the bottom, where you got the grab handle, I'm going to press Alt or Option. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option. I'm going to pull this out. And as we pull it out, you can see the way we can now turn this into a more of a circular shape. And I'm just going to make sure I get the top of the two towers. He says reversing out a little bit more. So let's just zoom in a bit to that area there. And uh, again, just holding the Alt or the Option key, just pulling it out. I'm just going to pull it over the top of that one tower there. That looks pretty good. In fact, just backing it up a little bit. Great stuff. Double clicking inside the frame. We have now removed the transform tool. Leave the selection in place because we're going to come over. We're going to go to the adjustment layer, hue saturation. Now when hue saturation opens, we're going to go straight to the lightness slider. We're going to click on this. We're going to drop it down into the minus, uh, probably a minus a lot to that area. That would be pretty good. Right. In CS6CC, come up to the little icon here for the mask. You can click on this, which now shows the mask, and we can click Invert. In other versions of Photoshop, if you come to the mask itself, what you need to do, this is what you'll start off with. That's the way it looks. Now just simply use Command I, Control I. That is going to invert it, and there it is. There's the uh, outline there in situ. Like the way this is shaping up. Finally, we're just going to come, we're going to put in a, a levels adjustment layer just seeing the way it's sort of tapering off at the end here so if I just click on this I'm going to press alt or option again you'll notice the image has now turned black and as we move this slider across what you're looking for is you can see those blue lines there where we've got the cyan that's pretty good like that you don't really want to get too much of the whites because where it is white that is where it is clipped in the highlight so I'm just going to back this up a little bit into this area here and you can see the way we've moved this along on the histogram coming to the center slider. If I move it to the left, we're increasing more of the lighter pixels. If I move it to the right, we're increasing more of the darker pixels. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more bite by moving that across. And there it is. There is our finished image. Let's zoom in to fit on screen. Let's drop down to the bottom layer here. I'm going to press the Alt or the Option key. I'm going to click on the little eyeball icon. That is our start image. There we are. That's uh, bringing it up. That's putting it into the fisheye lens effect. This is the optional vignette effect around here. Then finishing off with levels, which I would use with or without this vignette effect. Go on, give this a try. I hope you've enjoyed this video. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.